The 15th century witnessed great events that marked a before and after in history. The fall of Constantinople in the hands of the Turks, the rise of the Renaissance of the arrival of Columbus in America are some of those events that marked the transition from the Middle Ages to the modern era. Thus, it is in this context of change where the figure of Gonzalo Fernández de Córdoba, also known as the Great Capitán, emerged. Military leader who not only stood out as a strategist but also for his innovative vision of war, as we will see below. Gonzalo Fernández de Córdoba was born on September 1st of 1453 in the castle of Montilla in the bosom of an Andalusian noble family, the House of Aguilar. He was related to the Trastamara family, which is why he joined the retinue of Isabella of Trastamara, later known as Isabella the Catholic. His loyalty to Isabella did not take long to manifest itself. During the War of the Castilian Succession, 1475 to 1479, Fernández de Córdoba began his military career by participating in the Battle of La Abuela on February 24 of 1479. His performance in the battle did not go unnoticed because even the master of the Order of Santiago himself endorsed the presence of Fernández de Córdoba in the battle front for the splendor of his armor. However, it was the War of Granada 1482-1492, the conflict that boosted his military career. This long war was marked, like other medieval conflicts, by the War of Positions and by the War of Attrition. Although as a novelty, it is worth mentioning the significant role that gunpowder and artillery played in this conflict. Under a subordinated command, he stood out for his bravery in various clashes against the Nazarites, being relevant in the capture of several places such as Tahara, Iora and Montefrio. In Tahara he demonstrated leadership and siege skills, improvising a cover to protect the advance of the troops to the walls. It is not surprising that his superiors ended up granting him the rare privilege of personally choosing the men who would accompany him in the attacks, as happened in the siege of Iliora, 1486. In addition to his military merit, it is also worth mentioning his diplomatic skills during the war, thanks to his mastery of the Arabic language. Thus, Fernández de Córdoba took charge of the negotiations with Sultan Boatbil, which culminated in the surrender of Granada on January 2nd of 1492. After the war, the Catholic monarchs reward Fernández de Córdoba by granting him new lands and the right to exploit some rents. Therefore, his position in the social scale had improved significantly as he enjoyed a growing fortune, a good military reputation and the favor of the monarchy. Thanks to this new status, the Catholic monarchs entrusted Fernández de Córdoba with their main military campaigns abroad. First of this would be a succession conflict with France for the succession of Naples, giving rise to the First Italian War, 1494-1498. Fernández de Córdoba led the expedition of the Hispanic monarchy, which fought alongside other Italian states that made up the Venetian League. Although he lost the first battle of Seminara on 1495, he won the other battles such as the Siege Zoatela 1496 and Ostia 1497. In Atela, the appropriation of surrounding resources that allowed the defenders to resist until the arrival of reinforcement was decisive. While in Ostia, the use of artillery and deception were fundamental to take the stronghold. In any case, the results of his victories determined the withdrawal of the French in Italy, from which the King of Naples rewarded him with titles and lands. But he also received the nickname of the Great Captain, although this was comforted by his troops amidst praise. The fame of the great captain as a military man attracted the interest of Venice as a support to face the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans were Venice's main threat and were also the greatest fear among the Christians of Western Europe. The great captain assembled the troops and the fleet and set out on his march to Cephalonia, the objective of the Allies. Following his usual pattern, artillery and sneaky blows were decisive to succeed in the siege. The victory at Cephalonia on 1500 greatly boosted morale among the Christians who believed that the Ottomans were invincible. Therefore, the victory over the Ottomans also boosted the reputation of the great captain. 
But the most significant campaign in the military career of the great captain was the War of Naples, 1501-1504, where he again confronted the French. On this occasion, the great captain fought two decisive battles against France, Serignola, April 1503, and Scarigliano, December 1503. Both clashes resulted in more than just a victory, as they marked the beginning of Spanish hegemony on the battlefields thanks to its system of combat. The key to success was, to a large extent, the military reorganization carried out throughout these military campaigns. It brought the infantry to the forefront, which until then had been relegated to a secondary role thanks to the prominence of heavy cavalry. The combination of pikes and arquebuses proved in both battles to be very effective against the French heavy cavalry. He gradually replaced the crossbow men by arquebusers, leaving a ratio of two arquebusers for every 10 infantrymen, giving more and more importance to gunpowder. In addition, it counted among its ranks with rodeleros to counterattack the enemy lances, and habitually with lansquenets to decimate the enemy. The cavalry, on the other hand, was relegated to a support role, either to cover the artillery or to protect the flanks of the infantry, and to harass, for example, to decimate the retreating enemy. After the War of Naples, the great captain never again led any battles personally. Nevertheless, he held the title of Viceroy of Naples between 1504 and 1507. Although he appeared to be a competent ruler, he fell from his post as a result of his own fame. Upon the death of Queen Isabella the Catholic, his main patron, King Ferdinand the Catholic, began to distrust the great captain. The Aragonese king believed that Fernandez de Córdoba embezzled funds during the military campaigns and that he intended to rely on his fame to become king of Naples. The great captain present very detailed accounts, but that did not save him from dismissal and his return to Spain. Although Joanna I of Castile graded him the mayoralty of Loja, his relationship with the monarchy was not the same. It even got worse because Ferdinand the Catholic destroyed the castle of Montilla of great family value. Finally, he decided to retire to Granada with his family, where he spent his last days until his death on December 2nd of 1515. In short, Gonzalo Fernández de Córdoba earned his nickname of Great Captain. His courage, together with his tactical and strategic vision, gave him great notoriety as a military leader. He handled the concept of medieval warfare quite well, but it would be his innovative vision of war that would define him. An innovation that would be channeled mainly in the reforms of military organization, centered on the mastery of infantry and gunpowder. It was a military revolution for the time, laying the foundations of the famous Spanish Tercios. It could be said that the great captain began the hegemony of the Hispanic monarchy in the European battlefields that would last until the middle of the 17th century. Hey, do not close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe to the channel and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us to grow and continue making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.